All right, so let's start with the latest information that has come in where the Ukrainian Vice Prime Minister Mikhailo Fedorov has said that the country will create an IT army to fight against Russia's digital intrusion. According to reports, Ukraine is trying to protect its critical infrastructure and also conduct cyber spying missions against Russian troops. The Fedorov has said that there will be tasks for everyone in the fight to protect Ukrainian critical infrastructure from cyber assaults. The first task, according to the Vice Prime Minister, is to create a panel of cyber specialists who will of course guard Ukrainian critical infrastructure from the Russian cyber warfare. So the once vibrant European capital of Kiev is now living under a blanket curfew at this point of time. The residents have been asked to stay off from the streets. There are reports of Russian forces who have managed to infiltrate inside the Kievan capital. And according to reports that have come in, anyone who's found on the streets once the curfew kicks in by 5 p.m. in the evening is now being assumed to be a member of the enemy. Well, the evening, of course, started with a blaring air raid siren. Russian forces have pounded the capital with artillery and ballistic and cruise missiles. In the dead of the night, streets have been empty. In contrast to the columns of vehicles choking the roads in recent days, tens of thousands of residents fled towards the west in the hope that they can avoid the violence and the fighting that's been unleashed on them by the Russian war machine. And those people who are still stuck in the large cities across Ukraine have been taking shelter in underground parking lots and also in bunkers and bomb shelters. And also a lot of them are spending the nights in metro stations. Ukraine is reported to have some of the deepest and some of the most secure metro stations anywhere in the world. People have also been asked to stay away from windows and to take special precautions to avoid flying debris and bullets in the wake of the heavy shelling and gunfire that's been reported in the capital city of Kiev. In the last couple of nights, many people have, of course, spent their time sheltering in bomb shelters in the basements, in garages and in subway stations. Russia, for its part, claims that its assault on Ukraine is aimed only at military targets and installations. But reports have ever shown that other infrastructure, such as bridges, schools, kindergartens even, and residential buildings have come under attack from the Russians. A member of the Ukrainian parliament took to Twitter saying that Kiev will be under attack like never before because the Russian troops will hit the city with everything that they have got. But it seems like the will to fight has not died down in the people in Ukraine. Locals and politicians have flooded Twitter with quote-unquote hashtag Ukraine will flourish. The Western leaders have urged Vladimir Putin to choose the path of diplomacy. But after Kremlin ordered its troops to barge into its neighboring nation, diplomacy quite clearly, has failed on the Western Front. Kiev, for its part, has maintained that it is always open for a dialogue to resolve all differences. In a statement, the Russian Defense Ministry now claims that Ukraine rejected the negotiation process, after which Moscow had ordered to broaden its offensive from all directions. После того, как украинская сторона отказалась от переговорного процесса, сегодня всем подразделениям был отдан приказ о развитии наступления на всех направлениях в соответствии с планом проведения операции. And the latest statement by the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has said that presidents of Azerbaijan and Turkey have organized for talks with Russia and Kiev is ready for negotiating with Moscow. Ільхам Алів і президент Ердоган запропонували організувати переговори з Росією. Це можна тільки привітати. 
Meanwhile, in the eastern part of Ukraine, in the Donetsk region, parts of which are controlled by the Russian-backed separatist tensions have been high. Remember, the fighting, of course, started here. Russia recognized Donetsk and Luhansk as independent republics. And there's been intense fighting that's been reported between the Ukrainian national troops and the rebel leaders who've taken charge of certain parts of Donetsk and Luhansk. There's been fresh shelling that's been reported through the night that has damaged many buildings. At the moment, it is not clear as to how many fatalities have in fact taken place in the fighting that's broken out in the last four days. Meanwhile, down south, a port city is home to Ukraine's hydroelectric power plant where satellite images show Russian ground forces having now taken charge of this hydroelectric power facility. The trucks are seen on the dam for the plant as well as others are parked by the road. Now, experts say the Russian troops have met with unexpected resistance in the last three days, especially in Kiev and in some of the other major cities across Russia. In 2019, Volodymyr Zelensky was a comedian with very little political experience. He stormed to power on the basis of his charisma and the political promises of a good life that he made. And now, three years later, he is a wartime president leading the Ukrainian charge against one of the biggest Russian onslaughts that Ukraine has witnessed in its history. Listen in to what Volodymyr Zelensky, the unlikely war president, has had to say. Beyond is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news on the move.